and welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Bend Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, aka Back, and as always, we love hearing from all of you. Your comments, stories, ideas, get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305-900-2363. Again, that's 305-900-2363. Or you can always drop an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. Riding along shotgun, as always, is my producer, sound engineer, and co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, we are happy to say that, yes, April is here. I think you all are. Hopefully, you got your taxes in and you're done, all right? If not, make sure you get that extension filed. But we're not here to talk about taxes. We're here to talk about fun things. And what I did was put together a list of five things to do in the outdoors during the month of April. Now, of course, we've talked about how the fishing can be fantastic. We've talked about spring turkey season gearing up to take off in many of the locations. But what else can you be doing if you are not a fisherman, an angler, or a hunter? And that would be stuff with your family or things you can do by yourself. So I had a little fun with this because then I actually sat down and thought about in my travels, whether I'm in the southern part of the country right now, it's beautifully and nice and warm, or back up north where you might just wake up to a little dusting of snow. You never know. Regardless, there are things that you can be doing to help that spring fever along. The first one is, as always, I'm talking about take a hike. Weather is warmer regardless than it was back in January. So get outside and get that hike in. Those first flowers of spring are blooming up in the north. The crocuses are blooming in the south. You've got other flowers going. Texas, I think, has the blue bonnets right now, if I remember. And it's just a good time, whether you're by yourself for some deep thinking or with the family and explore a local nature trail. I encourage you to do that. Even one step up, if you're looking for a gift right now to give somebody, maybe consider buying a seasonal pass to one of the state parks. Now you're taking advantage already in April, all the way through the fall, early winter. Get lots of use out of those trails. Next one, I love doing this, and that is photographing nature. From the signs of spring to new baby animals to summer birds arriving daily. Think about it. Nature photography, it's all around you. And now thanks to cell phones and the technology that's there, often the cell phone has better pixels than some of those original older cameras that came out. You no longer have to lug around a big DSLR. Or often, I'll even admit, I am an amateur photographer. I have you know, the big full frame camera. I honestly take my phone and use that more than not. I'm going to brag on you and jump in. You're more than just an amateur photographer. You're very good. Thank you. You're very good. You're not giving yourself enough credit. You're very, very, very good. Well, all I can say is you already have everything you need in your pocket to take and capture some amazing photos. So guess what? You can do more than social media and watch reels on it. All right. I'm trying to encourage you. Take some great photos while you're out and about. Next one. We know April can still be a windy month, right? The winds kind of come and go. Well, when's the last time you flew a kite? That's my question for you. You know, I have asked for this for a birthday present is not a little El Cheapo. I'm talking a serious, legit kite that's got the, that you steer and, and that you steer. Is that right? (laughs) Yes, it is right. You steer them. Okay. You've got the two different strings on them. I've been asking that for a birthday present. I haven't gotten it yet. Well, I did get you one a couple years ago, but, but that apparently was just a single string and it just went up in the air and then it crashed. I did think he seriously wanted the professional type. So, yes, they I are super cool. I went to the kids section and got him one of those. I'll be I, honest. I didn't but, like it. you know, another thing to do if you're thinking about, gosh, I have not flown a kite since I was a kid or you have kids and you're thinking now all of a sudden they've never flown a kite Do a quick Google search of where you are at because April does tend to have a tick of wind to it. You might find out that there is a little festival going on and then you can even take the family to, say, a park that's having one of these and you'll see some huge, It's really amazing. We were just buzzing around doing errands one day and we saw this. It was last year at this time. And we went, Mm -hmm. what is that? And you said, just cruise up there and see what's going on. And there was literally hundreds of people, all sorts of kites, 
kinds that I didn't even imagine they even had made. It was incredible. And the kites, by the way, when you're looking at them up in the sky, these huge ones, they look like they're as long as a semi. I mean, they oh, are I not would say, Yeah, I would little. say that is as long as they are. But it is a fun way to get the kids, your grandkids. It doesn't matter what age you are, a first date. Get out and go and see oh. these. And then there tend to be vendors selling kites and they can ask you the questions and say you know is this kite too big for my kid not that you want your kid to lift up and fly away or something I mean, like it, that it, it was really cool i i know most people are not into kites but try it it's it's actually really a cool experience all right number four on my list is visit a greenhouse or botanical garden now i say that because as soon as it gets but a little give bit yourself a budget back I said visit. Oh, visit. Okay, you didn't say they're going spend. There he is. Did you notice, everybody? Tigger was not listening to what I said. All right. No, I said visit a greenhouse or a botanical garden. The reason why I say either or is because depending on where you're located, for example, we're in the farther northern part of the country. We do not have indoor botanical gardens to go visit. We have greenhouses that are hoping to get all their plants ready so they can plant them someday, sometime after the frost is officially done. But with these warmer temps, we all know we're getting that spring fever and we're thinking gardening and all of that. I highly recommend going for a stroll through your local greenhouse or a garden as such to become not just inspired, but to also learn about the various plants that will thrive in your climate zone. But don't get overzealous, though, because we've just be just be honest with everyone. We are guilty of that. Okay, maybe it's me that I get guilty of that, of going in and getting all excited because I want to get the garden going and I want to try this and try that. And sometimes it's just too soon. Exactly. It's, it is too soon. That's why I'm saying you aren't going to be able to buy anyway. I mean, this I is, want pumpkins and watermelons tomorrow. Okay. This is, think soon. about it as window shopping or you're planning, preparing for the upcoming gardening season. And now you can kind of start to get an idea in your head of what the budget is going to be, how much space you're going to need, what plants will work for the place you are at. And these folks are less busy is a way as customers are not all in there so you can actually ask your questions and get answers and it may be a good idea maybe to purchase your potting soil now maybe there you go now that's um, a great some, one some of those sorry did i take away from your list was that nope. one of them on there no no, no. okay i'll just go through all right my last thing to do in the outdoors in april number five is pull out the bike we're talking the bicycle not the motorcycle the bicycle i'm saying when is the last time you rode a bicycle a Secondly, if you do have one, get it out now. Get the tires aired up. Yes, Tigger has already pulled ours I've out. I've done that. The air is they're in ready. them. Have they been used yet? No, but they're going to be this weekend because we're supposed to, or sorry, in the next week or so because we're supposed to have gorgeous weather. But regardless, I'm telling you, there you go. Get the kid in you inspired. Everyone likes to ride a bike, right? You know, you can get a bike for a couple hundred bucks. I mean, yes. a really good, you can. You don't have to buy a $2,000, $3,000 mountain bike. I mean, you can go and you can get into a good one for a couple hundred bucks. That's what we did. All I can say is you're only as old as you allow yourself to think you are. As long as you think young, you're going to be young. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're talking about the propane gas griddle. The hibachi. Well, he calls it the hibachi, but stay where you are. The bed will be back right after this. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Get ready for the Western experience of a lifetime. The world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale is back and better than ever. Join us May 16th through the 19th in Mile City, Montana. From the finest bucking stock to electrifying horse racing, this event has it all. Don't miss out on the kickoff concert featuring Josh Turner and special guest Chancey Williams. Mark your calendars and saddle up for the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale where the spirit of the West comes alive. Get your tickets at buckinghorsesale.com. 
Are the Florida Keys calling your name? Have you dreamed of catching exotic mahi-mahi, red snapper, sailfish, grouper? Blue Water Girl Charters can fulfill your dreams of saltwater fishing excitement. Book today, full or half-day charters. Let Blue Water Girl Charters make your dreams a reality. Blue Water Girl Charters, follow on Facebook for booking and more information. Blue Water Girl Charters, catch dinner and memories. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Bend Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Back, and riding along shotgun is always my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Grilling season is about to be upon us. In some areas, it already is, and some of you are lucky enough to grill year-round. Well, in the barbecue world, using a grill or a smoker, it's always been a long-lasting tradition, right, when it comes to the outdoors? Now, if you haven't purchased one of those gas propane griddles to try, you might realize you're missing out. We jumped on the bandwagon ourselves by adding one of those outdoor propane griddles a few years back. And as a result of the diversity we found that we could use in cooking, we now own two in different sizes. Our first purchase was a four burner propane gas pit boss griddle. I bought that as a gift for Tigger. Yep. And then uh, we chose this one, by the way, if you're wondering why we chose this four burner, which is a large, it's a very large surface area, by the way. Yeah, it's one of the bigger ones. We chose it mainly because of where we were putting it on our deck, the front grease clean out location was more accessible. And that kind of led us to go down that road. Well, and at the time when we got this, it was more of a... Uh, They said it was a heavy-duty version, right? So Mm -hmm. that's just, you know, the farm ranch kids and us, you know, the more heavy-duty, the better. (laughs) Right. But this one has given us the drizzles. We have struggled with it. Um, Not that I got anything against against Pit Boss, but I've struggled with the reason, you know, we got the four-burner one because you're supposed to be able to control the heat on the different areas, right? You know, one is warming, and then the other you can get really hot. So think about it as zones for cooking. Some things you have to cook a little faster, some a little slower, some you want to keep warm while the rest is cooking. There you go. That hasn't worked (laughs) at all. Uh, No, it's been, it's really been frustrating. I've tried different oils, butter, uh, this one that everybody's using, it's called, I think it's called Bacon Up. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Bacon Up, Bacon Grease that you can you can get. A lot of people are using that. But this one has been frustrating, and uh, now we're having problems uh, getting it lit. Okay, so there's been the cons on the one that we have. Right. But there were a lot of pros, yes. which is why we have not given up on owning a gas griddle. I got to do some maintenance to it. Yeah. A gr- gas griddle is what they're called. They're called a griddle, a gas griddle. So there are a lot of pros when it comes to them. What are the pros? You're saying, okay, well, Digger just listed off a whole lot of heck knows. Well, so I mean, that was, that was why just my do you now own two? Okay. And that, so let's, let's answer that question. The pros, though, are that, as you said, you can absolutely be cooking your bacon, then your eggs, your pancakes. You can cook your entire meal on this whole surface right, area. Right, right. And that's why we got the big one. You just need to learn and understand how the heating elements work, where it's hot, where it's cool, all of that. That's the biggest thing right there. Secondly, I love to cook ahead when it comes to, say, oh chopping up a bunch of hamburger. All right. To me, that's not the most fun thing to do is to go and brown a bunch of hamburger. However, we use it all the time, whether it's in our home or we're going camping, fishing, quick meals to pack up. So I will easily go and brown 10 pounds at a time on this massive surface and boom, it's all done at once. You're talking meal prep. Meal prepping. That's what I love this big surface for is the meal prepping that we can do. And then we're ahead of the game. And the food tastes exceptional off of that griddle. It's really, 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 really good. But again, we're kind of uh, the one that we have is great, but it has some issues. It has some issues. And I'm I'm working on it as we speak. I'm not giving up on it. I'm not going to let you give up on it. All right. 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 (laughs) All right. Now, the second one we purchased was a 17 inch, and that one is a Blackstone griddle. So it's a 17. So as you can imagine, it kind of is like a tabletop griddle. But yes, it still runs off of propane gas. Well, we love this size because of us being able to take it on the go. For example, camping, fishing, going to have a picnic, 
or it's just him and I, and we don't need to light up the big one yeah, for a so meal. You're, you're wasting all that propane. Yeah, we just have this small little surface area, and for a house of two people, it cooks everything up just perfectly fine from the hash browns to the steaks. There's no issues when it comes to that. Now, I know there's a lot of people listening and saying, oh, come on, you two, you can't figure this and this and this out. But here's one thing that I did learn and I want to pass on, and this is one that escaped me, is when you're cooking on the griddle, it's a big open top, right? And I know they have some with covers on them, but you lose a lot of your heat. So you want to make sure that you're cooking in an area that is out of the wind. I know a lot of people, they even, you know, will be under a roof or something just to be able to try to control and capture some of that heat. I'm so glad you brought that up because I actually wrote that down that that is one of the cons of all barbecuing. So I hate to say this, whether it's a griddle grill or smoker, we have learned that the same issue has applied to all of these. You need an area with minimal wind. Yeah, you need wind is an issue. You got to end up otherwise. There are some wind shields they sell that you can buy online. However, you and I haven't had the best of luck with those ones. Yeah, we tried some of them. So I can't recommend any of them to buy. But regardless, you have to have an area you can pull it aside that's out of the wind. However, here's our disclaimer: do not use a griddle grill or smoker inside of a building. There you go. You had to say that. (laughs) All right. Talking about, though, the preparation and maintenance, because as you can imagine, this this flat griddle surface is almost like cast iron. You still have to season it before you even use it. That's right. And there's there's all kinds of different videos out there. I've watched a million of them of how people are using different oils and they're doing this. And that's why, by no means, are we giving up on the one that we have, because I think we just need to use it a little bit more and I'm not ready to go back and completely scrub this thing down and re-season it but if you're having one that you're you got the troubles with don't give up on it yet don't give up on it and I'm going to give you this tip too you absolutely must read the manufacturer's booklet regarding the preparation seasoning and maintenance on it all right make sure you read and digest and understand it and if you don't understand what it's saying do what Tigger just said and watch some YouTube videos excuse me, YouTube videos, because it will affect how the surface area will act in the future, how your food will taste. So you got to follow through with all these processes. And the more you use it, it's just like the Dutch ovens, right? And we've talked about that a lot over the last several years. The uh, You just have to use it. Keep using it over and over and over and over and over again. Don't give up on it. That's what I got to say. That's that's what I want to tell you. I put together five easy steps to season a griddle. First off, you got to remove the rust, by the way, in case you open up your new one, you might find a little spot of rust. That's easy to do. Use a scotch bright pad, get rid of it, clean the griddle, wipe it off with a very mild dishwasher soap, very mild. And then you prepare to season it where what we've done the past here is heat it up on high till it starts turning a different color. Yep. Add the oil and make sure you're using a high smoke oil. So like a flaxseed, something like that that has a high smoke tolerance. And you got to do this process a minimum of three times. And don't use so much oil. That's uh, Most people use way, 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 way too much oil. And that's part of your problem. That's why it gets sticky when you're done. Yes. So while you're in the seasoning process of it. I wrote out all the detailed instructions on how to do it on the benshow.com show notes. You can find them right there. But it's a simple step of me simply heating it up, putting oil on it, evenly coating it, letting it burn off till the smoke stops and repeat again three times. And then making sure you go back and continue to season it again, again with products like uh, Buzzy Wax is one of them. You had mentioned the bacon. Uh, bacon up is what they what they call it. I like to use, like you said, the flaxseed oil, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. grapeseed oil. I mm-hmm. know people will use that one. And too. a lot of the manufacturers of these griddles have a product they sell as well, of yep. course. So there you have it. Wrap this thing up. I'm back telling and you, go give it a try. Ours. Give it a try. The griddle. Out. Head to thebenshow.com again for the show notes to learn how, more about how to use your griddle. We're gonna take a short break here. When we come back. We're going to have you all gearing up to do some garage sailing. The Ben Show will be back right after this. Hey, guys and gals. This is John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV travels the back roads to the backwaters in pursuit of the ultimate adventure in hunting and fishing. Join Team UOA every week for exciting action in the crosshairs of the outdoors. Catch Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV on YouTube, 
Amazon Prime, and make sure to follow Team UOA on Facebook and Instagram to share in the ultimate outdoor adventure. You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. Check out our approved taxidermist. Depending on your location, the award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota, then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska, and for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. Josh Turner. Baby, lock the door and turn the lights down low. Live in concert Thursday, May 16th at the Mild City Bucking Horse Sale in Mild City, Montana. Baby, we One of country no music's way. hottest performers with special guest, Chancey Williams. Baby, Tickets are on sale now at buckinghorsesale.com. Josh Turner with special guest Chancey Williams at the world-famous Mild City Bucking Horse Sale in Mild City, Montana. Welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and riding along shotgun, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, if you do not know this about Tigger and Beck, we love garage sailing, okay? Garage sales are our jam. However, where we're located, it's not quite garage sale season yet. So what do we do to kind of get excited and gear up for it? Okay, maybe Tigger doesn't do this, but I get a kick out of the show, The Antiques Roadshow, because you just never know what you're going to drag I in. I can't stand that show. I know. It immediately I takes you back to being that show. four years old, a babysat by grandma, and that's Drives all she has me on. nuts. <laughs> Well, I, I can't do. believe you like that. I love it. And I end up binge watching it when he's not How around. How in the blazes does that get you geared up for rummage sale season? Well, get this. Okay, recently a woman in Rome, Italy, she was over there visiting and she went through, not recently, I guess I should say, she did this back in 1988. So like 36 years ago yeah, just or the other more. Day. I don't know. 30 plus years ago, 40 years ago. I don't know. Anyway, she was going through markets, which I have done when I've traveled overseas. I'm addicted to them. I love going to these open markets. You never know what you might find. Well, lo and behold, she bought a brooch for $25 back 30, 40 years ago. So all right. Th- that's a that's a piece of jewelry. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Like all our right. grandmothers would have worn a brooch or okay. our great grandmothers so would like have worn. So it's like a pin or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Something, right. something you've never seen me worn, okay. ha- wear, right. honey. <laughs> anyway, it was beautiful. She brought it back. Anyway, years later, fast forward 30, 40 years, she decided to try and get herself on the Antiques Roadshow. Well, she went on there and found out this $25 brooch she bought was actually worth close to $16,000. Okay, I got an issue with that, though. I mean, is that what she would actually had a buyer for it or that's what a projected a projected but here's what spun her mind into thinking and digging out this brooch out of the back of her jewelry box was she was watching antiques road show they had a brooch on there and she was going wait a second i bought something like that years ago at a market you're trying to get a sponsorship from Antiques Roadshow, aren't you? Well, maybe. <laughs> I feel like they need to go with a younger version, out. okay? I think they need to like bring it up with the times and get somebody like me who's a little younger. But regardless, it is fun to find stuff. Other great finds you and I have found over the years, I should not even share this because now we're going to have to like fight against all of you to do this. But Leatherman, they're not a sponsor yet. But this is our little secret with Leatherman. They are fantastic. They, if you have anything wrong with your Leatherman at all, mechanism-wise, it's even rusty, you send it back to them. They will either A, send you it back refurbished, or B, send you a brand new one altogether. And if you mark and say it has sentimental value, like it was your father's or your grandfather's, they'll ship it back along with a brand new one. A brand one. new one. Their customer service is awesome. I think we've sent in, what, three or four already? Yep, we find them at rummage sales <laughs> like and we buy dollar. them for like two bucks and then send them back and we get a brand new one. I know. Right now, some people are shaking their heads. They're like, you do that? But why Genius. not? Why not? Genius. So I'm just telling you these stories to get you excited because as you drive around, spring is here. If you end up with a beautiful weekend, the garage sale signs are going to pop up and you just might want to swing in. 
And we're going to call this show Wrapped, folks. Thank you to my producer, co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. And remember, as always, send in your questions. You can do so by calling or texting 305-900-2363. Again, that's 305-900-2363. Or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. And don't forget to let us in on any of your field reports. We like to hear those too. If you missed part of this episode or you want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebendshow.com, as well as the show notes from this show. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app or to The Ben Show YouTube channel. Looking to change things up at your next event, conference, awards, banquet or rodeo remember you can book tigger and beck to entertain your crowd we are prca pro rodeo card holders tigger's a pro rodeo announcer i'm a music director let us make your event extra special thank you to our partners the world famous mile city bucking horse sale ditelli outdoors the prairie crocus medora boot and western wear blue water girl charters buckstorm little rack taxidermy Mickey's Mustard, Atlas Tracks, RFD TV, and Wrangler. And finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners out there that came along again. Whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with me, Beck, all week long by following The Bend Show on Facebook and on Instagram. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Bend. (laughs) 